Roger Altman here at 6 a.m., uh, just at about 6 a.m., founder and senior chairman of Evercore. Good morning. Uh, you were supportive of Kamala Harris. I'm so curious um, what, you, what your takeaway of, of this election is as you look at what's happened here. How much of this was a repudiation of her personally? How much of it was a repudiation of the last four years? How much of it was a repudiation of the, of the left, if that is uh, to be said? And, and what kind of soul-searching or introspection do you think happens on a morning like this? Well, do we have four or five hours? Uh, we, we, have, we, we have three. Do. As we it happens, we have three. We actually do have four today. Yeah. Well, first of all, I mean, I think you have to acknowledge that Trump is a gifted political athlete. I mean, he just is. Uh, and anybody who tries to say differently, I think, is just wrong. Uh, I'm not his biggest fan, but I, you have to acknowledge that. Secondly, the country obviously is shifting or has shifted to the right. Uh, only I saw in an exit poll, only 29 percent of, vo of voters in that poll identified as liberal. And, and Trump dominated the other is, is it 71. the country shifting or is it the Democratic Party that ran so far left? Well, the, the, the result, I think, is the same. In other words, um, I would think it's a part, it's some of each. I mean, if you look at the, uh, for example, and Mike was just talking about the issues that dominated. The top two were the economy, especially cost of living, and immigration. Abortion was actually, at the, based on what I saw in exit polls, pretty far down the list. Democrats would have expected that to be different, I think. And Trump, again, he dominated in terms of voters who cared most about the economy and voters who cared most about immigration. And uh, so I think the country has shifted to the right. And by the way, we're going to see... We're going to see a very isolationist approach from Donald Trump, which is consistent historically with shifts to the right. Uh, but also, it is a repudiation. How come, no one, how come no one knew there was a shift to that? I don't buy that. I, we had Arthur Brooks on, and, and every book he's ever written, one of his main premises is the country is center-right, center-right. The vest, it, you know, take away the coast, and it's center-right. And, and Barack Obama could have been elected twice by a center-right country with, with, with Bill Clinton easily elected by a center-right country. I even think Joe Biden, after the first Trump election, could, you, you can't attribute it to a right-leaning country. I don't think it's shifted. Well, no, I, I, I just think it's center-right all the time. And what Becky said, the left is, look at, look at some of the basic tenets of the far left at this point, Roger. I mean, defunding police. And, well, well, Bill Clinton let's, let's, would not be able to be a Democrat no, running as a no, Democrat. Well, the the well, country well, hasn't changed. The Democratic Party has changed. Let's get into that. I, I would just argue there's been a, a there is a conservative mood in the country. Well, maybe that's it's from I, immigration. Yeah, that I would maybe argue it's from 13 million but, illegal uh, immigrants. But in the same at the same time, the uh, American perception or the voter perception of the national version of the Democratic Party is really negative right now. There's no two ways about that. And let's be honest, Harris was not a strong candidate. She just wasn't. Now you tell us. Uh, well, you, you know, didn't tell us that last week. Did I? Well, wait, that wasn't here last week. <laughs> no, week before. I think we've talked for a long time on this broadcast about well, well, we, how we put a lot of lips. We put a lot of lipstick on, on that uh, candidate. Oh, I mean, that, that's a bad expression but, I mean, to Joe, use in this Joe, case. But I, I mean, did, but we, did I, we, did I expect, we dress her up, the, the mainstream media. I mean, just, in, in just being straight here, did I expect a sweeping victory like this from Trump? No, I didn't. I thought it was going to be extremely close. Mm -hmm. Now that you see the magnitude of the victory, you cannot conclude anything else. Well, I agree. She was a, uh, I've always thought candidate. That. I've Honestly always speaking, two days ago, I would have said, she's a really reasonably good candidate. How? In, You've seen her word salad. You've seen her not answer questions. You know, we, we had no idea what she stood for. Well, in any event, I think we can make a judgment now that she wasn't a strong candidate. I don't think you need hindsight. And, and you could have seen Trump that coming. Trump ran a campaign, give him credit. Uh, on, on, and he said this at his Madison Square Garden rally, the famous Reagan question, are you better off than you were yeah, four years ago? He literally right. said that. Right. And the American people rather resoundingly said no. Right. And that proved... So decisive. what do the Democrats do? Do they t continue to what they've been, which is kind of labeling themselves the party of resistance and going down that path? Or do they say, OK, how do we remake ourselves and try and you know, reconcile what we are hearing from the American people? Well, first of all, we have to wait and see who wins the House. I think that's going to be a really big factor. Uh, it would seem a little improbable to me that the Democrats win the House, but it looks like it's going to come down to five seats in California mm -hmm. in terms of who has 218. And uh, if the Democrats win the House, uh, then I think 
the dynamic will be different than if they've been swept across the board. So they would then, you think the House would at that point say no to everything Donald Trump proposes, or would they try to find ways where there is common agreement? Well, I think it depends on the issue. So, uh, Immigration, let's say. Well, if the Democrats are smart, they work out a solution on immigration. After all, they ended up supporting the Lankford Compromise. Correct. Right. And something around that ought to be possible to do, especially if Trump is supporting it. Right. Uh, there probably have to be some tweaks to get him to support it. But the Democrats would be smart to get on board with that because the country wants it. But in terms of your question, I, I hope I might be wrong, but I think it's going to be a slow, bitter, and, and, and bloody internal process within the Democratic Party as to, as to uh, rebuilding itself. Because and do you think the rebuild is about, is about personnel and personality, or do you think it's a rebuild brand. around different policies? I think it's the brand. And it's the brand. Yes. What did Barry Diller say the other day? He said the same thing. He, he suggested that 2028 was going to be a. But, a but he moment. said that the Democrats needed to, if it's a big Trump win, the have Democrats to rethink. Need listen, to listen, totally the too. Democrats are getting killed, my two cents, on cultural issues. Why have they done so poorly with, for example, non college men voters? And there's so much evidence that it's cultural more than economics, although in this election it was both. And if, if the Democrats, when you say culture, just define that for, for folks. What you well, mean by that? You mean I think like I sport, think, women in sport or men in sports, things like that. Yeah. Well, that type of thing, transgender right. issues, right. Um, and the progressive side of the party. Uh, and I, I just think that if the Democrats don't uh, get to a more, it's not just centrist, but it's centrist culturally position, they're going to have a hard time, and. Uh, you know, if you look at these results, Mike Allen was just talking about it. Trump did much better among women than Democrats right. thought he would. Last night, uh, you know, no. uh, five, well, early in the evening, what I kept hearing was the gender gap for Harris in, in her favor among women is about the same as it is for Trump among men. 53% right. of the vote is expected to be women, therefore she'll win. Well, it turned out the gender gap in her favor among women was much smaller.